Here we are, um, an evening with Dr. Soloway in the um, non-mobile office, so we're not in the car. In fact, it's Thanksgiving weekend, so we're not even in the office, so I can't tell you, but we're just in a different office. Um, it's another one of the secrets, but you know, as you listen, you'll learn. By the way, those of you who have purchased my book, I give preference to those of you who have purchased my book and have read my book, and one, preference for you for your questions, and two, you get to have input into the next book. I want to know what people want to hear about in the next book, particularly when it comes to Rheumatology for Dummies chapter, and I'll have a chapter on Orthopedics for Dummies. No, not Orthopedics are Dummies, but, well, maybe they are, but the chapter will be um, uh, Orthopedics for Dummies and Rheumatology for Dummies, and I'm not going to reiterate the stuff in the first book that was talked about in the Rheumatology for Dummies. However, I need your feedback so you can guide me to talk about the diseases that are the most common to you. I believe we spoke about lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and gout, to name three, in the, in the book Bad Medicine, um, released by um, a Simon & Schuster subsidiary called Skyhorse. The book's available on Amazon or directly from my office. And by the way, if you want to be a good guy and call up and get a signed copy, call Carlene. Carlene's my uh, uh, person in charge of book sales, uh, 856-794-1548. Okay, on to gout. So gout's a hot topic because it's 5% um, of the population has gout. So it's, it, makes it, it makes it the most, in, most common inflammatory arthritis in the world. Um, sadly, it's underdiagnosed and it's wrongly treated. Uh, those of you who believe in colchicine and, and indomethacin for people uh, over 50 years old, um, I'm really not interested in what the guidelines say. I'm interested in what works practically. And I'm working, and I'm sorry, I am concerned about getting the patient better. If the doctor thinks I'm a quack because I use steroids, um, well, if it's because you're diabetic, that's why they make insulin. I didn't make you a diabetic but we have to get rid of your gout. So you gotta prioritize what's the worst thing. So if you're a diabetic who gets gout, even if you need to take steroids and run your sugars up, well, you just have to adjust your sugars. I mean, you gotta take a little responsibility for this as well, because most of the contributing factors to getting gout are things that people do upon themselves, obesity, metabolic syndrome, beer. Um, now, on the other hand, if you drink wine, you're protected a little bit. And if you have a lot of dairy food, you're protected a little bit. But um, uh, recently, I want to share a story with you. I had a man who, um, frustrated with the system, as many people are, bad care, 25 years severe gout. And I promised him if he followed my directions, he could eat and drink whatever he wanted. And um, long story short, I'll tell you a couple of things. If you get a person's uric acid down to three or in the three and a half range, they can eat and drink whatever they want, even if it's on the no, no, the no list for gout. Anyway, this guy took it to the extreme. Doc, how you, uh, sorry, sir, how you doing today? Oh, doc, you're a genius. Why am I a genius? What did I do? Oh, well, you said I could eat and drink anything I wanted. So I followed your directions and last night I had 23 beers and a gallon of wine. By the way, I'm not exaggerating. Um, he didn't get a gout attack. Why? His uric acid's down around two and a half or three. He's on 600 valopurinol, as most gout people, uh, mo more people belong on 600 than one or 300. That I will tell you. Whether they need six or five, that's debatable. But the pills come in one and three, so it's easier for somebody to become confused taking one 300 and two 100 milligram pills. So you take your two 300 milligram pills, if that's what I prescribe, at the same time each day. Why do you take them at the same time? The body likes the stability, the steady state. Remember, if the, if the uric acid shoots up or down, they're both gonna cause a gout attack. So the only, the only way, okay, hear me carefully, the only way to diagnose gout, there's only one way, only one way to diagnose gout. Put a needle in a joint, drain fluid or blood or something, look at it under the microscope and seek out. Okay, now, here comes the, the line of questions. Well, my doctor said on ultrasound, I have gout. Well, no, what your doctor is saying is he saw the double line sign, which is a typical feature of gout. However, 
That cannot tell you whether the current attack is from gout or another crystal such as calcium pyrophosphate. So, sorry, no, you cannot diagnose a gout attack based on the double line sign on an ultrasound. Now, having the double line sign means that you are a gout patient. Congratulations. Now, my doctor said my gout test is positive and I have gout. Well, I hate to tell you, there's no such thing as a gout test except for looking at the crystals under the microscope. What you're trying to say is that you have an elevated uric acid. And what I need you to know is that the lab will indicate the normal uric acid is anywhere from three to eight. I believe nanogram per DL, but the unit, I just don't know for sure. But for this conversation, it does not matter. It's the number your doctor tells you. Now, without going into the scientific details, if your uric acid is more than 6.6, .6, that's terrible and you're going to get bad gout. If you're being treated and your uric acid is 6.1, you're getting worse. So the regular gout patient needs to get the uric acid below six and the bad gout patient, according to the literature, you should shoot for five. Dr. Soloway shoots for four or less because then you can eat and drink what you want and not get worse. I'm not encouraging bad habits. I don't want you to start smoking and drinking beer because I can control your gout. And by the way, the last time I couldn't control a patient with gout, I was a rheumatology fellow, and that was about 35 years ago. So no, I can, I can control your gout, and I can do it better than anybody else. If you find somebody who treats gout better than me, I really would like to shake their hand, and I would recommend that you probably go see them. But nonetheless, the goal is to get the uric acid as low as possible, the goal is to confirm the diagnosis with 100% certainty. And the goal is to understand that even if a person has rheumatoid arthritis, they also can get a gout attack. And you have to distinguish the two and make sure that they don't go to the emergency room thinking they have an infection. Because if somebody is not there, such as a rheumatologist, not an orthopedic surgeon, the fluid will not be analyzed properly and we will not know if there are crystals or not. Um, the mainstay of treatment in the acute attack in my uh, hands is, is steroids, medrol or prednisone, the lowest dose possible. Now, why doesn't a medrol dose pack work? Well, the natural history of the gout attack being a week and the pack lasting five or six days, eh, if you don't put that fire out completely, it'll flare up again. So that's a very bad way to treat gout. Why don't you use indomethacin like all the books say? And why don't you use colchicine? Well, after seeing a dozen cases of colchicine neuromyopathy, which basically means you get severe weakness and you're gonna die, unless you stop the drug and recognize that's what it's from, or bone marrow failure, meaning you're gonna be anemic and probably die, you don't really wanna use those drugs. Um, we, we test all this in the office by looking for gout crystals, of course, but be that as it may, um, if your sugar goes up, that's why they make insulin. You can adjust your sugar. Remember, it's not the height of your, sh it's not the height or the level of your glucose that's dangerous or good. It's your hemoglobin A1C, which is indicative of your chronic control. So, um, I'll end by saying that if your hemoglobin A1C is normal or close to normal, the likelihood of me driving up the sugar with um, steroid, either injection or pill, uh, is very low. However, the hemoglobin A1C, if it's more than 10, then you are a very poorly controlled diabetic and gout is your least problem, although it may hurt the most. But diabetics should not be getting NSAIDs, Motrin or Indusin, they should not be on colchicine. They have to, you have to protect those kidneys. You have to protect um, um, the heart, the stomach. These are dangerous products. Steroids, they've got a bad reputation while the other drugs are more dangerous. With that, signing out from Soloway tonight and uh, we'll see you next time.